I have a friend who's interracial like I am. Like me, he has a white mother and a black father. We're both from the same town. We're both around the same age. But, of course, we're different people. And being different people, we have different perspectives, different experiences, different opinions. And I was having dinner with this friend one night, having a conversation about race. And although we share the same skin complexion, he felt like, for me, being interracial was different from his experience as being interracial. When I probed him to explain this to me, explain how he felt that his situation and my situation when it came to race specifically, how it was any different. He couldn't give me an answer. Or it seemed as if he didn't want to tell me what he believed to be the answer. It seemed as if he didn't want to tell me the truth. So with that being said... I can't say what it is to be one race or the other. I can't say what it means in truth to be white or to be black. All I can do is share my perspective, and that's what I plan to do in this episode. What it's like to be white, what it's like to be black, to me, those two factors, those two variables rather, rather, factor one another out to me, what it's like to be mixed is simply one's experience of being an individual, of being a person. And that's the lens that I look out when it comes to my own individual experience. That's how I was raised by my parents who, in the early 90s, began their relationship at a time much different than the society we find ourselves in today, where interracial relationships were much more polarizing. Growing up, my parents would tell me about them going out to eat or being at church or being at a grocery store and getting looks from people, people looking at them as if they were strange it was very unique to be in an inter interracial relationship. To take it a step back, to take it a step further. In my grandparents' age, interracial marriage was actually illegal. Please quote check me on this, but I believe that Interracial marriage was illegal up until 1972. That's only two generations from where we stand now. Not even. But nonetheless, what I'm mostly proud of growing up interracial is not my skin tone itself, but rather the experiences that I've been exposed to from each culture. Yes, there is a African-American culture, and yes, there is 
a white American culture. But taking it further than just the pig, the pigment of one's skin, those two cultures derived the experiences that I've had as an ind individual and that has shaped who I am today. Not so much the color, but very much more the culture that's behind each one. And I've said this before in the podcast where I started my life on the south side of Youngstown for the first 10 years. I lived in a predominantly black community. From that experience, I had moved to the country, a small town called Unity, Ohio. It's about 45 minutes outside of Pittsburgh. And that culture was rural and white. Those two experiences gave me a plethora of perspective from each respective culture. And I was fortunate enough to have a father in my life who spent less time focused on what another person looked like and more time focused on who they were as people. And I had the opportunity to see him engage with people from all walks of life, no matter what color they were. People that have come from absolute poverty, people that are middle class, people that are extremely wealthy. I had the opportunity to see my dad engage with each one of them. And what stuck out the most to me is that his character, his personality, the way he engaged with others was consistent throughout each person and each culture that he encountered. No matter what they looked like, no matter where they came from, who he was as a person remained the same. And he treated the other people with that same level of respect. And to me, I've had many a conversations with both my mother and my father about people in general and about cultures in general. And race is very, very rarely brought up, even though we have talked about race, where we have talked about times that I've been stereotyped by the police and pulled over um, more times than I can count and had my private property, my vehicle searched without warrants. There's been times where my dad has found himself in similar situations. And I think what's important for both me and my dad is that we never had anything to hide. And that is at an individual level, not at a racial level. As an individual, our character is one where we don't have to worry about being arrested over something that we haven't done. And I think people on both sides of the aisle, whether you're white or black, they have victims of undue arrest. But I think it, it comes into play, and even more so if you're in a, in a group that is highly stereotyped, to understand that the best way to play the game is to play the game by the rules. And that's how I was raised, and it served me well in scenarios that I would deem and most people would deem to be unfair. But nonetheless, when my parents would talk about race, it always centered around the 
ridiculousness that is to judge someone or to treat someone not as an individual but as someone who's solely a, a part of a group and being a part of that group to extrapolate and make assumptions about who they are as a person and what they're going to, going to do to us that was absurd because we understood that we're each individuals we each are responsible for our individual behavior and our actions so no no matter what the person looked like what culture they came from i'd have many conversations with my parents about things that we could learn from them not as a member of a group but more so as an individual who's pursuing their own right to freedom and to happiness we would look at people who would make mistakes and extrapolate from that what did they do wrong what could have they have done better how does this apply to us as individuals we look at successful people what did they do who did they connect with how did they contribute how can we emulate that and do more of the same? And again, this is about individuals and about how individuals behave and how they act. And judging them off of their merit rather than where they come from, what they look like. And making assumptions of how they might behave. So for me, as an amateur comedian, my act is about being white, being black. That's what the majority of it's made up out of. And there's people who laugh, thankfully, at the absurdity of it. And there's people that get angry and upset. Rightfully so. They have the right to have that opinion. But the reason why I bring that on stage and the reason why I joke about being interracial is because it's so ridiculous to think that that is an important factor. And the way people would treat me and the way that people would treat others, no matter what race or color they look like. About a year ago, I had a conversation with a business owner who's married to a minority woman. And he told me how he and his wife started a minority owned business, being that this woman was a race of, of people that's a minority in the United States and that she's a woman. So with that, unbeknownst to me at the time, there are incentives and there are perks for minority-owned businesses. There are actual companies that in their charter, in the way that they say that they're going to conduct business, they are required to give a certain amount of business to minority owned businesses as a minority and as a business person this brought to to my mind how could i leverage this you know how could i play the game in in a manner that positions me in in the best light to succeed so I tossed around this idea of becoming a minority-owned business and leveraging and working with companies required to work with minority-owned businesses. And then I took a step back and I felt like that had gone against my character and what I believe. And the, the person who had taught me about this aspect of business 
he and his wife and his whole family, they're great people. And I appreciate the work that he's doing and I understand his approach to it. And I don't want to demonize his approach. This is totally and utterly my point of view on this perspective. But for me personally, I don't want anyone, whether it's the government, whether it's a potential client, customer, employee, employer, significant other, I don't want anyone to engage with me for better or worse due to the color of my skin. The term for better or worse to me should be bold, italicized, and underlined. Because minorities in this country have fought for the right to be treated equal. And yes, they wanted to be treated equal because they had received the worst. But on the other side of that, to be treated unequal for the better is still inequality. And that's something that I believe those that came for before us were not hoping to achieve. We can't have the ability to play the victim and the victimizer all at the same time. We can't seek to be equal until we want to be treated unequally when it makes sense for us to gain something. For me, my goal is to contribute and contribute in a way that makes people's lives better. And yeah, sure, there's perks and there's incentives and I get why there's incentives when it comes to things like a minority business owner to even the playing field, if you will. To me... That doesn't solve the issue that is the gap between the majority and the minority. You don't usher in equality by promoting inequality. If we want to be equal, we have to be equal at all levels and at all times. And, and as a minority, which to me is ironic because when you look at my complexion, it's a, it's kind of like a beige, khaki, caramel color. And when you look at that skin tone, you think of people in the Middle East, you think of people in India. You think of people in parts of Africa and Latin America sharing a, a, a dark skin tone in which we could argue that there's more people at the global level that are brown than there is people that are white. So as a side note, on a global perspective, at a universal perspective, I could be part of the majority, but here in the United States, I'm a minority I get why that's the case, and I, I, I understand the, the challenges and the hurdles that come along with that. But with all the work of those that have come before us, we have a great opportunity, the, the, the opportunity of equality, to take advantage of opportunities as equals. And the contribution that I want to make wants to be solely based off of how I was able to contribute 
and work with others due to my merit, due to my own behavior as an individual and not as a minority. So what it's like to be black and to be white and what it's like it's the same thing as being an individual and being a person and being a human being who has universal opportunities and challenges that they're faced with on a day-to-day basis. And that is the ability to choose one's own beliefs and make decisions that they need to be accountable for the actions that they live out. That's what it's like to be mixed. To be to be mixed is like being a human being who has to face limited time, limited resources and decisions that have to be made in the face of those universal variables. I don't want to demean anyone's experience who has faced racism, which I've personally encountered. I don't want to diminish anyone's um, attention to the cultural gaps that our society currently faces. All of these things are true. But what I also feel and believe to be true is that in order to create change, the only way that we can do that is through being able to tend to our own garden and fix ourselves first and fix our family second and then anything left over we offer to the community and we offer it in to the community with the understanding that we're all the same and we're all connected and we are all in this together Anything outside of that is a distraction. Hoping, wishing, arguing is not going to change someone else's behavior. You can't change people. You can't, air quote, persuade them. All you can do is influence them. And by bickering, complaining, blaming... Those aspects of engaging with other people, whether they be people that look like you or not, that engagement doesn't position you to be influential. What does is taking responsibility for yourself and expecting others to do the same. And working towards a net positive contribution so that everyone can reap the reward. I believe that we're all equal. And I, I believe that most people believe that as well. But don't seek out inequality when it's convenient for you. And that's on both sides of the aisle. When when you speak out on inequality, ask yourself, what is this for? Is this for the change that I can contribute to? Or is this for 
a signal that I could put out where other people will look at me in a specific manner. Yes, there's work to be done, and yes, there's change needed. But the only way we're going to be able to do that is if we take accountability and move forward with honesty and empathy, not of what another person looks like, but what their experience is like as an individual and what we can learn from them and apply as a whole. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Have a great week.